What's up guys, welcome back to To-Do List Minecraft. Um, let's go check out what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I think we talked about it on the last video. We're going to be doing some automation, which is going to mean that I don't have to do as much work off camera, and that's basically all. Um, well, no, actually, it'll also mean we're able to do a few more intricate things. For example, we won't even have to dig for diamonds because we'll be able to sieve them out of gravel. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll explain how to set that up in a bit, because it, it's a bit complicated of a process. Um, so let's go and check our to-do list uh, chamber. Looks like it's already started up. Something went wrong. <laughs> it happens every now and then. <laughs> okay. Let's just back over it once. Um, like I said, I'm not great at redstone. Um, let's see what we have to do. Build forge. Okay. Um, to do this chamber gets it wrong sometimes. Uh, it is a forge, but technically speaking, it's called a smeltery. What we're going to do today is build a smeltery which is a big system of blocks. It's a multi-block structure, um, which means you make it up out of several blocks. Sorry if you already knew that, I just um, just in case there's anyone watching who doesn't usually play with mods. Um, yeah, it's a multi-block structure made out of lots of different blocks um, to make what is essentially a giant furnace. And instead of melting things directly into ingots, it melts things into liquid, which means you can cast them. How did you get up there? That's really impressive which means you can cast them into uh, other things like... Oh, I see! Oh, what a strange illusion! Didn't it look like he was on top? But anyway, um, it means you can cast them into ingots, but also you can cast them into gears, which will save us a lot of time, because a lot of the machinery we're going to make requires gears. And you can also cast them into um, blocks, stuff like that. Also, you get double the, the amount of resources, so all the stuff that I've got mined in my um, in my quarry, you can... Uh, we can just... We basically double it instead of getting... For example, uh, 64 blocks of iron, we'll get uh, 128 blocks of iron. Took me a second to do the math there, but I'm pretty proud of uh, my ability to time 64 by 2. Um, right, so the first thing we need to do is to uh, pick a location. And then I'm going to build a forge out of dirt so that you can see. And then I'm going to do the laborious process of gathering gravel using vein miner, which won't be too hard. It's just um, hold shift as you dig and you will get a bunch of the resource you were digging and you will take an appropriate amount of oh we forgot to finish this i'll do that off camera um whoops uh you'll get an appropriate amount of the resource and you'll take an appropriate amount of damage to your tool so i mean it's it's gonna be maybe we should talk for a second about the the, the layout of this world so this is going to be the resource generation area everything that's to do with making resources like um but taking something from base level to a higher level which is what we're doing here water and dirt and seeds into bread um, it's going to be on this side and anything to do with like um, uh, selling stuff, changing stuff, editing stuff, modifying stuff, like all the bee stuff, all of the um, the genetics stuff, everything like that is going to be over there in the main city. So this is just going to be like an outlying village. Um, and since we're going to be breaking down materials, it's going to be here. But storing materials is going to be over there in the village, in the city as well. I like the idea of the forge being um, a little bit outside of the city the village so it's probably going to be here let's clear this area a little bit this is oil i think oh no no it's witch water um it's, it's not very good it's not very good to be in um yeah i think this is going to be our forge area i'm going to build it out of dirt to show you and then i will also build a house to suit it off camera um it's going to be like basically like the um houses you see in minecraft anyway the uh the, the blacksmith's house um because that's what basically it is Okay, I'm going to build out of dirt and then I'll be back and we'll talk about what I'll need to do. Um, so I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here's our little dirt outline. What I'm standing on is where we are going to generate the fuel for our forge. And it's going to happen automatically and constantly so that we never have to put any fuel in again. This block doesn't need to be there, actually. I don't know why I put it there. Um, so it's going to be, if you remember, or if you've ever seen a, Minecraft, a vanilla Minecraft uh, blacksmith, they have a little pot of lava in their workshop and that lava is just like it's just a lava source block in place of that basically we're going to have um a crucible or several crucibles all generating lava and pumping it into a tank so that it'll be visible here and that tank will go down into the um the smeltery which will be our um our fuel so uh, this is going to be lava, and then this will be the forge master's house, or I think the word's blacksmith. Uh, okay, you need to go away, because this was a very intricate... Well, it's not intricate, it's just some dirt. But still, I mean, there's the witch water. Um, still, I mean, it's not handy having him around. Come on, swim through the witch water and kill yourself. 
Did he jump over the witch water? Uh, this is, a, I know, a really bad thing to be in a let's play. Uh... Okay, let's just. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's really annoying, but it's fine. I'll fix it later. What is that? I just <laughs> some. Okay. Um. Anyway. Uh. So this will be the generation of lava, which will be great. Now, this is actually a rather deep hole. Um. Let's get some dirt. Good. Um. It's actually a rather deep hole. This is going to be our forge. And if you see at the bottom, that's where our forge controller is going to be, our smeltery controller is going to be, and the, um, the fuel. So what's going to bring this down is pipes, which we will build once we've built the forge. Until then, because we won't be able to access the forge, um, the smeltery, sorry, I keep calling it a forge, but it really is a smeltery. Um, we go in this hole, hopefully there's no monsters in here, and then we'll be able to access it here, and I'll put some chests here so that we can, um, so that we can place resources. Um, but this is going to be it. There's no upward limit, so that's why I'm starting low because uh, it would be silly to have like a 10 foot or 10 block tall smeltery sticking out of the ground here. Um, but it'd also be a waste of space to only have this two layers deep. So I'm making this quite deep, um, which will allow us to have lots of room to put resources in. Um, and maybe I'll even make it a bit deeper, we'll see. All that matters is that there's a control block and a smeltery beyond that. This can be as high as we want it to go, but I'd like it to be just one or two blocks high. This area here is going to be just some place to walk around and, um, you know, it just looks nicer. Probably probably marble or something similar. Um, maybe something a bit like that. Following that style, the whole village is going to follow roughly that style. So I'm going to replace this with the uh, blocks that are relevant. The smeltery blocks are made of gravel, sand and clay. And there's that, we can find that in abundance. It just takes a while. Um, so I'm going to get all that, make this, put, it, put this together, and then we'll get started on um, producing some uh cogs gears stuff like that and that'll make us our machines and then we'll be able to automate all this and never have to worry about it ever again so um i can see at the bottom that there is a uh control block and the uh fuel and then these are drains so that we can actually get resources out so um i've just put this little border around it because i like the way it looks um we have processed all of this and if we go down here little doorway little hobbit hole uh, into our hobbit hole and we have a bunch of resources here so this is the base of our furnace and this is where we'll cast everything i should probably put a torch back here but i don't have any um so i'll tell you what let's just search up we need to make a polarizer and um that is copper gears and tin gears um, I'm not going to grind everything out, I'll just make the basics, but I am going to make this into a resonant one, which means making a bunch of stuff. So for example, a resonant, we have to have a resonant machine frame um, and then do this all over again. So to make a resonant machine frame, we need to use a enderium gear, enderium ingot, which we need an enderium base. Um, I'm going to do all this off camera, but the first thing we will need is a tin gear. So let's melt some tin down. Um, the reason we have invar blocks is because we need invar to make automated sieves. Um, I'm just showing you the first bits of this process. I'm not going to do it all on camera because it, it's so long and so complicated that it's just not worth doing it all on camera. But I'll make all the machines we need and then um, and then we'll get to work automating everything. So there's a bit more invar. Let's pour out the uh, electrum too. And I think we definitely need electrum gears. I think we'll probably need about six of them. And then once this is done, let's put the tin in to melt. Um, we will definitely get an alloy we don't want. I think we'll get brass out of this, um, which is fine. Enough electrum. Electrum gears. You see, it's a very, very involved process. Um, it's going to take quite a while to set all this up. That's why I'm not doing it on camera as well, because it'll, be, it'll be very boring. Uh, it's just me hitting these buttons over and over and over to make all the resources we need. Um, this is, this is the, basically the same as grinding, but that's why the first thing I always do is automate everything. Uh, oh, I think I might have interrupted the pouring actually. Oh no, it's fine. So we will need tin gears and we may as well make some tin blocks. It's good to have on us. Okay, I am going to keep on doing this and I will be back once we are all finished. Okay, we're back and you might see that we've got several machines, many, many machines, and it took a long time. Um, 
but we've got them. So there is a lot of survival generators here. This is because we are not at the stage when we can make any more advanced generation. And um, we will get there, but not right now. And uh, this is good enough for now. It won't be great and it'll be overly complicated to set up, but um, better than nothing. And we need to power all of my machines. And believe me, this will not power them. I'll probably have to make some more, um, but it'll do the trick for now. So we have three pulverizers. We have two uh, igneous extruders and we have three automatic sieves. What happens is the igneous extruders produce cobblestone, like uh, you can see the inside, you put water here, lots of water and, and lava here, lots of lava, and then they produce cobblestone at an alarming rate. We have two because one of them is for generating lava for um, to power the furnace and I guess any other use we have for lava. And then um, these the pulverizers crush the uh, cobblestone into gravel and from gravel into sand and sand into dust and then each one of these sieves one of those components and then we sort it into different places. Um, how we sort that is down here. So what we're going to do is make some pipes now. Um, we have to have pipes because we, well we need them. Um, it'll be a huge pain if we don't, if we don't get any pipes. So I'm going to use all of this and put together some ender conduits. I think they're called ender conduits. Item conduits. Well, I just, it's probably better off searching conduit. There we go. Um, yeah, we're going to put together some item conduits. So we need for that to use, uh, to make binder composite, which is clay, sand, and gravel. We're going to need a lot of this. So um, no problem filling up the inventory with it. I'll do this really quick until we've got as much as we need or as much as we can make rather and then we'll be back okay there we go our limiting factor was in the end gravel but we can use sand for other stuff so um we should put this all on to cook i think i've got lots of lava still um it's pretty pretty energy efficient the um this smelter okay now we need to uh cook our binding composite which shouldn't take long we'll just put this on and then there are some other ingredients we have to make um so for this it is pulsating iron nuggets um, I have some iron left and I have some ender eyes here okay we've got pipes now and um, I will explain what we're going to do with the pipes so um, these just exist so that we can take items from the uh, extruders to the pulverizers to the sieves it's a quite complicated system so I'm not going to set it up on camera again but basically all it's doing is taking the um, the cobblestone to the pulverizer and then pulveri the, the pulverized cobblestone, the, the, the gravel, sand and dust through to the sieve and from there we'll set up a, an organizing system only once we've set all this up. So um, I'm going to set all this up off camera because it's, like I said, it's quite long and arduous and it's um, frankly a pain in the butt. You have to redo everything over and over again every time you mess it up and um, well, it, every time I mess things up I need to redo them because it gets quite messy. So um, we'll be back when I've done that and otherwise um, see you in a second. So um, there's a lot of things happening here. I will first just mention we have a power problem which is that um, a lot of these machines are ticking up to the amount of power they need and then collapsing back down again and just doing one block at a time because there's just not enough power. Um, that's fine. Basically behind this is a huge battery. Maybe I'll just I'll dig around and show you. Um, a huge battery of um, a shovel. A huge battery of uh, survival generators, but survival generators are just not good enough for what we're doing, right? It takes a lot of power, um, and even then, we've only got. Whoop, where is he? There he is. Go on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's in the hole. I guess he's in the hole. He doesn't do any harm. So, um, yeah, there's a huge battery of survival generators. This goes. There's like six, seven blocks that way. And they're all getting fed coal. Um, I've given it every piece of coal I could find. I mined for a long time to get it, and um, it's still not quite enough, really, because it's it's got to put it's putting all the coal in all the generators, but they can't generate fast enough to uh, to find them, like to to make enough resources. Um, even this guy put outputs coal and it automatically goes into here, but even that um, is not quite enough. So um, it's not going to work like this for a long time. So what's going to happen is at some point in the future I'm going to produce uh, a reactor which will produce a lot more power and be able to give all of these machines everything they need. And then we'll be able to get resources 
a bit more quickly. But right now this will do. I mean, we've already generated a ton of stuff. And that's only been running for a little while. And even then, it's been running on and off, on off, on off. So, the next thing we need to do is build a place to put these resources. And I was thinking that this place, we have a natural little dip. I wanted this hidden away because it's a bit more, a bit less like villagey than the rest of the places. But, um, yeah, we've got this natural dip. And I was thinking to turn this into a storage area by putting a roof over it and then filling it with um, crates. Or rather barrels, sorry. These things that you see here, these are barrels, and basically they work like this. You right click, left click, to take a stack out, and then you right click to put it back in. If you hold right click, you will put all the ones in your inventory in, um, which I haven't got anymore, so it will happen. But, um, yeah, and that's basically how they work. So I'm, that's what we're going to use to store everything. I've got the um, item conduits, and they go around, they're going to go around and fill up the barrels automatically. They'll never put more than... Um, the barrels can only hold one type of item, so they'll never... Uh, we'll, we'll need a lot of barrels basically we need enough barrels to hold all of those uh, like everything that this can produce everything that this can produce everything this can produce and maybe some extra for anything we put in here which isn't too bad um, it's like what uh, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 14 or so and then there's 14 roughly 14 for each so um, maybe up maximum 40 barrels so look, I'm going to get started on building this, and then um, I will pop back, and you'll be able to see our progress. But it's just going to be a really basic structure for the sake of um, storing all our barrels, basically. The barrels just take a lot of wood to make, so I'm not going to show you the process of making them. It's just, it's just a, look, I can, I can show you the, the barrel recipe. It's just um, a chest, and then a bunch of oak wood, or a bunch of any wood, and then um, a uh, slab on the top. It's pretty good. They're pretty functional. I like them a lot. So I will make them and then we will be back. Okay, so we've put our barrels in. What we need to do now is, well actually I might just take a second to um, put in some little decorations around it. Um, what we need to do now is make our, well we have to do some piping or rather tubing um, I guess around the backs, but the first thing we should do to ensure that nothing goes messed up with that that nothing goes in the wrong place We need to put all of the things that are going in these inside of them and then lock them So you just shift click and then right click and that locks it It just prevents anything else from going in it means we don't have to filter it We don't have to manually go in at the back of every single one of these nodes and give it a filter Which would take a lot a long time and also a ton of resources. So um, I'm gonna do that and um, We'll be back in well. I mean I can do it on camera I just it just take a long time it's just it's just this for like an hour making sure that I haven't put extra ones in and then uh, keeping going I'm gonna try and put all of these oops all of these ore have I already got no I haven't um, I'm gonna try and put all of these ore on the same level yeah that's so I just have to keep checking that I've not put anything out anything in um doubles. Looks like I already got Osmium. I thought I saw it. Platinum. Is that Osmium? No, that's tin. Okay. Um, there's no, like, other than the fact that, there's, that um, I want them in the same barrels. There's no rhyme or reason here. Um, I just um, want to put them in, in roughly an order. And then we'll never have to deal with this again because it'll all be sorted automatically. And if, if you don't know where to put something, you can just like this. There you go. Um, and then I'll just shift click on all of these um, that's what I'll be doing for the next hour. All of the ore is going to go on this side. So, because there's three stages to every ore, for example, the um, the crushed stage, the uh, there's crushed, dust, and uh, cracked. So these are all cracked. And then um, I'm going to put the crush the crushed above them. So I think I've got nickel in my hand. Yeah. So nickel's going to go there, and the dust will go at the very top. I mean, it's not the most efficient because they can all be blocked up into smaller. They can be blocked up and then crushed again. Um, but I'd have to have an automated crafting system to turn these into blocks and then um, another pulverizer to turn them into um, back into this and then over and over again until we get finally just blocks of crushed dust or even just automatically straight away process them into um, into the ingots over there and that's not a bad idea but um, we haven't reached that stage yet we probably will in the future because uh, I'd much prefer that this looks a bit messy having all of these but I mean we'll see so I'm going to put all these in their rightful places behind these this wood and behind this dirt. There are, I'll just dig on one up to show you. 
there are a ton of um, pipes and tubes all pushing into them and th since these are locked to the same resource they will only ever fill up with this um, we've got one for just about everything as far as I know if anything else shows up all that will happen is it'll stay in its inventory like I think there might be actually one not one for charged surface quartz yeah we've got one for normal surface quartz but not for charged so we'll just put one here I have to go and um, I'll have to go and add a pipe um, I put them back in the chest um, but that's why we've got extra barrels anyway and that's why we've left extra space um, look now we've got basically all the resources we'll ever need f to do m most things I've left space and I'll probably end up doing a second floor down below for things like um, ender eyes and um, I don't know all the resources that can't be produced here we'll have to think of some way of making them and it'll probably be um, just that we acquire them normally or that I'll make a mob grinder in the nether and stuff like that in the end um, yeah and I'll put some space below and we'll, and we'll have a second layer but that's this done for now the next thing we want to do is automate our um, automate our forge and that's not going to be difficult the bit that I'm most looking forward to is building the the place where we at uh, the uh, the black blacksmith yeah I want to build the blacksmith I want to make this really quick as well because it'll be fun the um, this is where the lava will be automatically generated that's what we'll do with our other uh, igneous extruder I, I've put it away as well um, but our other igneous extruder is going to go there and it'll be all hidden away but basically it'll it'll generate it doesn't take any power generate lava to fuel our furnace and also we'll just have a big source of lava here so um, I'm gonna do that and I will see you in a second I'll, I'll, before I put it together I will explain basically all I'm gonna do is make a crucible um, or actually probably two crucibles or maybe even three and I think I now have again the resources to make some more blazing cryothium uh, not cryothium pyrothium um, which is the same stuff I use to upgrade I think I made some upgrades over there and it needed blazing pyrothium but it takes a while to make but it's not a huge pain in the bottom um, and I need that to melt the cobblestone so you make a crucible I can just show you I need to make a um, crucible which is um, just porcelain clay which is clay and bone meal and we now have abundance of that so I need to make two of those and then um, blazing pyrothium which is pyrothium dust which is um, uh, redstone coal dust sulfur dust and blaze powder we've now got all those resources in abundance as well because they're all generated over there and um, put those together into this with some pipes and basically the pipes will pull out the metal pull out the cobblestone from the extruder put it into the um, crucibles pull out the lava from the crucibles and put it into some tanks here which will be made of um, I'll show you the tanks as well the tanks are uh, oops the tanks oops well, there you go yeah the tanks are obsidian and glass panels which we can also make obsidian using our um, extruders as well um, it's just a little bit more of a hassle so um, I'm gonna put this together and then we'll be back um, I will stop well, I'll probably die to this guy first um, <laughs> well this is, this is not pleasant flee over the farm into the water can't get in the water Okay, so I'm going to die, and then after that, I will come back, and I'll just start the build for the blacksmith, and I'll tell you about how that build's going to look. Oh, then kill me. Thank you. Right. Uh, oh, I forgot I put a bed here. Well, I'm going to die a couple of times. So, um, I'm going to start this build for the blacksmith, and then when I've got to the point where I'll, put, I'll be able to put this in, I will show you, and I'll get all the ingredients together. So, I will see you in a second. Okay, we're back. It took a while, but uh, we are done. So, if you'll look in this chest, you will see um, that this is automatically filled. Well, you don't know that it's automatic yet, but you can see that it's got iron and gold in it. So, I want to show you this. It's a very cool feature. I'm going to put both iron and gold in here. They'll all get sucked in, and uh, you'll see them melting down. It's actually quite a lot. And what's going to happen is they're going to be automatically melted down with... Oh, I left a hole. This is... Um, I have to put a new block in. I've, uh, I've uh, used them all up, but I'll go put another block in in a bit. Um, yes, uh, you can chuck whatever you want in this hole, and I've done it so that you can specifically drag things and throw them in. I thought it seemed fun. Um, and uh, they'll get sucked in there, they'll get melted down automatically, and our lava here is generated automatically and fed into this so that it's got constant fuel. Um, and that's through a pipe that goes down. I'll show you that in a second. But under here is a... Um, uh, igneous extruder which makes cobblestone and then four um, 
crucibles which melt the cobblestone into lava and then store it in this tank there's actually six tank blocks here but i'm only showing two there's two more under the floor um and this little rim around the edge is just to uh stop you from seeing the edges of the tank it looks like there's just plain lava there but lava there but you can actually see that i'm currently on um a tank block um so let's go downstairs and have a look i'm going to fill in this space eventually um so that it's no longer a little alleyway i think there might be some i think i saw a monster in here last time i was in here well, no. Okay. So, um, let me go through what all these pipes are. Uh, let's put this here so I can, I can hop. Oh. Okay. Um, so, this pipe goes up to the hopper up there that you saw and puts everything inside the furnace. This, there's a pipe that you might be able to see just under there. Um, yeah, there you go. You can see a little red spot. That is the lava pipe that goes up to the tanks over there. And this one goes back to that chest to put the finished products. So, what these two pipes do is they drain, they take, um, they extract lava, lava, they extract molten metal and put them into this tub. This one pulls out any excess and puts it back into the uh, smelter. Now, if there is not enough to form a block, the reason it takes it out of the bottom and puts it in here is because if there's not enough to form a block, then it will never... Um, it will never fill up and replace because this gold will just be stuck in there forever. So this pipe extracts whatever's left, takes it round and puts it back into the um, into the machine. Uh, now I've run iron and gold through already and what happens is when you run out of the right amount the gold gets put on the top. Sometimes it gets messed up like it has a little bit here um, and it's trying to insert iron and pull out iron but um, I think I think it will happen eventually it's just going a bit slowly. Um, but yeah, so this pulls out the excess and puts it back into the machine. I will replace this with a pressurized pipe because it works a lot better with a pre pressurized pipe. Um, but otherwise, we are fine. So this will automatically create blocks of gold and iron for us, and then the product will be put up at the top. So that's our automated uh, machinery. Let me just uh, fill this space back in. Clearly, there's a hidden dark space underneath here somewhere. I think I heard a skeleton as well. And then let me show you the inside of a little shop. I think I said it's um, this is where blocks, blocks will come when they're automatically generated. And I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go over and see our uh, resource generation. And I will show you what's going, going on over there. It's been running for quite a while now. Uh, it won't have a ton of resources because we've been having a power issue. But it'll certainly have a lot anyway. I think we can see already. Yep, yeah, a lot of our ores have already started filling. I haven't put a roof on yet. I'll probably do that in between episodes because uh, it'll just take a second. Um... Right, so I mean our resources are gradually filling up. You can see that iron is the first thing to fill up and everything else takes a little bit of, of time. Uh, we have picked up three diamonds in the time and some yellowite, when yellowite is very important. That'll be our next power solution. And we also pick up a lot of other valuable, valuable resources like emeralds and pyro, uh, blaze powder. I was going to call it pyrite. Blaze powder and uh, bone meal, which will help with farming. Lots of stuff that will be very useful to us. Um, and you can see that we've used up all the fuel that we've made. So I think the power has... The power will probably die soon because I'll need to go and mine more coal manually. But that's why this is not a great solution. We need to make a um, a nuclear... I'm going to run away. A nuclear furnace. A uh, reactor, that's what they're called. Nuclear furnace. Um, oh, haven't fixed these stairs yet. So, I'm going to sleep. Okay, we are awake. Still raining. Uh, not a great time for a screenshot. But, uh, so today we finished our um, resource generation over there. And we finished our blacksmith and automatic smelter. So, resources are basically set for us for now. We'll be able to get any resource we need, uh, basically any time. We need to fix the power problems first. Oh, what's that over there? Let's go over here quickly. We've never done any exploration, and I love exploring. So let's go over there before we finish the episode. Um, there's always good stuff to be had out of chests. In this, um, in modern Minecraft anyway. Uh, actually, in normal Minecraft as well. But, I mean, there's a pretty high tendency for really valuable stuff to be inside um, randomly generated chests. I like these uh, towers. I'm probably going to integrate them in some way. I like the style of them. Okay, so, oh, cool. Armor, experience, that's knowledge notes useful. And this is very useful. I might start the next episode with creating this. Um, you can use it to make stuff, really cool stuff, like a builder's wand, and um, these will be helpful. A builder's wand, which is like a magic wand where you can place about seven blocks at once, which really speeds up building. Um, and you can also do a lot of other stuff. Let me show you. You need you use this to make, um, what's it called? 
impossible ingot, is it? Let's search Builder's Wand. So, oops. Uh, this is a Builder's Wand. That's a Super Builder's Wand. This is a Builder's Wand. It's Obsidian and um, a Mobius Unstable Ingot. So that's made by combining these three. And you get to keep this. Um, they are, you can't have them in your inventory for too long. You've, you've got to make them and then use them immediately. Otherwise, they'll explode. But you can use them to make some very cool things. Let me show you another one that I'm going to make pretty soon because that'll be helpful. Uh, we're going to make wings. Angel wings. Is, yeah, we'll need to kill the, and the, 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 what's it called? The wither before we can do that. But um, that shouldn't be pretty hard, particularly hard because at some point we're going to set up mob spawning. Um, but yeah, you can do that with unstable ingots, but you have to do this first. So I think I might do that in a, in a nearby episode because um, it's quite a fun process as well. You have to wait until midnight, surround a perfectly dark uh, enchanting table with redstone and then kill an animal uh, over the over the, the table and then there's a big lightning bolt you get a lot of like enemies spawn and the sigil is activated and then you can use it for crafting so i might do that because the builders one would really speed up all the things we're doing uh it's also can make a mess sometimes but it's also but it's quite helpful so uh i'm proud of what we did i will fix i'm going to do a little bit of uh, housework before we um we start the next episode finish that because i forgot to build the edges um maybe clean up the the area here fix the path um, stuff like that, but it, nothing that really matters to be done on camera. So I'll just do some tidying up before we start the next episode. Okay, um, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see anything specific, specific leave a comment below. And um, my name is Jester of None. Thanks for watching today, and I will see you next time. They have complicated lives. You know, I can't keep up with all the things they're doing. They're running about doing their, their business. And you know what? It's not right for me to pry. And maybe they're God, but...